Hey guys, we just wanted to pop in real quick. Uh, we're going to get to the regular episode of the podcast now, but um, we wanted to stop in. We we had a guest on tonight. We had Andrew Nerd Rage Gaming on tonight. His link is in the channel description below, um, so go check his channel out. But we had some technical difficulties. Um, couldn't get his audio, and so we are... Yeah, so we, we have to cut the sports segment out of it, but we wanted to come in real quick and A, let you guys know, and B... Um, we refer to it later on at the podcast that we want your um, uh, Super Bowl predictions mm -hmm. in the comments below. And so it helps if you have something to compare to. Right. And so we wanted to just get in real quick and chat with you guys. Yep, abbreviated. So I picked New England over Atlanta okay. because I think that the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick combination, having been there so many times mm -hmm. before and just having that kind of experience, like yeah. Super Bowl is almost just another game for them. So it's just you, you've you been there before. You know what you're doing. You're the Patriots, and admittedly, you're really, really, really good, which, <laughs> as a Chiefs fan, hurts it just, physically to awful. say, exactly. like, I need to go cry now, but right. I, I, I just think with that combo, and as good as Atlanta is, I think it's going to be a really tight game, I think it's going to be close, but I think the Patriots just pull just it, out. it out, like, you, yeah. they, they have more... They have weapons spread across defense. They don't have single weapons. They have an arsenal, right. which they can just pick from to hit. And so I think as that, mm -hmm. with those advantages, they win. Yeah, I think the problem with the Patriots um, is, is you know, we talked a little bit about this in the stuff that you guys don't get to see. But <laughs> we, we uh, um, the, the Falcons have a couple really, really good weapons, right? And Julio Jones, best wide receiver in the game right now. And you've got Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, like best running back duo in the NFL. You've got a really solid tight end. You've got some good backup receivers. you got like Mohamed Sanu, who's really come into his own mm -hmm. these last few games. Um, but you take away Julio Jones, you take away one of those running backs, Atlanta's offense is going to be significantly held back. When it comes to New England, you've got – Danny Amendola, you've got Julian Edelman, you've got Chris Hogan, who is a lacrosse player playing football. <laughs> he's from Monmouth University. I mean, oh, come on. I know he went to Penn State after that to play football, but he's a lacrosse player. He yeah. plays lacrosse, and he's better at football than most people, and it's not fair because if you put him on 30 other teams in the NFL, he's not even starting. He doesn't even see snaps, but it's Tom Brady throwing to literally anyone, right? Yep. The Patriots don't have star players outside of Tom Brady. They just have – Good players who do what Tom Brady They have guys with good hands do. that get passes from Tom Brady, and I think that's where you win. You get the number one scoring defense yep. on the other side. I mean, and, and then you have, you know, Tom Brady and Bel Belichick's offense. And yeah. so I think that that's hard to compete with, and I think if anyone can do it, obviously Atlanta is the one that made it there to right. do it, and I think it'll be a really good game. And honestly, I would love for Atlanta to win. I want Atlanta to win, but I think the Patriots will win. Yeah, I, Atlanta's defense is – 20 points a game since week 11, including the postseason. Their defense has been improved. Their offense is obviously phenomenal. Like, we know that. We've yeah. seen it. It's really great. I think that if we looked at the two teams and see who's more locked in right now, I think it's Atlanta. Yeah. They're rocking the ball on offense and defense. They're not turning it over. They're forcing turnovers. They're not making mistakes, and they're waiting for that other team to make a mistake, and then they pounce mm -hmm. on it. The Patriots looked bad against Houston. Any they other player team against Houston. would have beat them. Against the Steelers, they looked bad for a half, right? Yep. I think if they don't come out with their A game the whole time, I think Atlanta wins this game easily. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. I see them stepping up for it. Uh, fun fact about the Super Bowls, 14% of all Super Bowls, Bill Belichick has been the coach and Tom Brady's been the starting quarterback. 14%. When you can measure a percentage of the, of the amount of times that a player and coach – the, on the same teams have been there. Insane. Like that's insane. It's not fair. So their experience is obviously going to go there. One wild card, I would say, is the Falcons' head coach, right? Dan Quinn. Yep. Thought I was going to forget. Don't have the notes up. Uh, Dan Quinn. <laughs> he was defensive coordinator for the Seahawks uh, in their Super Bowl win and then their Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I think he knows how to beat them as a defense. Patriots offense, largely unchanged since then. Josh McDaniel is still there at the helm running that stuff. And I think that that game that they played against Patriots, they did not lose because of their defense. It was their offense. They yeah. forced Tom Brady into mistakes, which he doesn't normally do, and they turned the ball over, and they were able to give their offense an opportunity to win. It didn't come through, as we all know, but the defense was there. So I think that is a little bit of an X factor that you don't always see is that he knows – what to do now granted the patriots are going to take away 
your number one option. That's what they do. It's yep. what they're best at. You give Bill Belichick two weeks to prepare for the best wide receiver in the league, done, shut down. Like He's not going to have the kind of games he had. I think that he's going to break out in the third or fourth quarter and make a difference, but he's not going to be going for 150 yards and two touchdowns in this game. I just don't see that happening with the talent on defense and with Bill Belichick's unbelievable mind, that sweet, sweet defensive coordinator they got over there. Uh, Patricia's militia, I think is what they call his yep. fans. Um, guy's awesome. Uh, but yep. I, I think that, you know, wrapping up, making my pick, I think Atlanta pulls it out. I think Atlanta is locked in on both sides of the ball. They've been playing really, really well. Matt Ryan's the obvious MVP candidate. He took down Aaron Rodgers, just dismantled him. He's phenomenal. He's extremely accurate in and out of the pocket. He's making good decisions. He's making really good deep ball throws. He was the best deep ball passer the entire year in the regular season. He's the like number three quarterback under pressure, right? So you can't just rush him and get him out of the pocket. He's not going to make mistakes. Like he's still really good doing that. Mm-hmm. So I think. Atlanta can do it. I think it's going to be 28-24. Yep. I think that they're going to have to rely on their offense in the fourth quarter. And I think, unlike Seattle, they're going to get it done, get that touchdown right at the end of the game that's going to put them over the top. Yep. I I have New England over Atlanta, and I'm going to change some stuff up here a little bit. I think they come out second half, like as second half teams do, and yeah. they just pick Atlanta apart. And I, I, I want to say New England 28 and Atlanta 21. Okay. And so Andrew uh, had – Atlanta at 27, New England at 24. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Andrew, and thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we really do appreciate you taking taking your time. And go check him out. Uh, give him some love. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll have him on next week. We'll do a little bit of a Super Bowl recap. We'll hang out, yep. talk with him some, so you guys can get to hear him. Um, so we're going to wrap up this segment, yep. and you're going to see the next segment. Moving on to regular show. Moving on to regular show. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Hello and welcome to Points of Interest. I'm your host, Jake, along with my co-host, James. Hey, guys. If you're new to the show, each week we come to you with uh, stories from video games and sports and kind of whatever strikes our fancy that week. Um, You can get us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Vidme. The list kind of goes on. So (laughs) check our Twitter, at IR Games, to stay up to date with the latest info and shows that we're doing. Oh, man. All right. Dude, that's fun. That's a good time. Talk without my headphones on, and I can hear the <laughs> world around me. Oh, oh man. man. All right. So, moving on from sports, <laughs> I saw a story on GameSpot um, that interested me for a couple of reasons. So, with Project Scorpio coming, Microsoft assures Xbox One will be supported for a long time to come, which I know is a worry amongst gamers as these new consoles are coming out. Right. I know that was kind of a worry amongst the PlayStation community when PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim were launched. Like, well, how long until we get to the point of, all right, they're not supporting the PlayStation 4 anymore and we need to upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, so Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, in a tweet, um, so this guy tweeted, he said, hey, Phil, I was reading the internet, on the internet that Xbox One will be the obs- will, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> will be obsolete when Project Scorpio, with the Project Scorpio release. Is that true? He said, it's that true, but <laughs> I think we, know we won't meant. knock him for grammar. <laughs> But Phil Spencer replies that Xbox One and S will be supported for will be supported consoles for many years, um, and I thought a that was cool of Phil Spencer to do that, right? Um, to come out and just kind of be part of your community. Um, I mean, I think that's something that Microsoft has always had a better handle at than Sony is the yep. idea of PR. They've been in it for a lot longer, not just in consoles, but in PC stuff and opera. They've been there since yeah. the beginning of computing. I mean, do you so think that could be a difference in location even a little bit? Oh, like, it's partially. It, it, Sony's based like, in Sony's Japan. a Japanese company. Like it's a, it's a it's much like, different culture over there. Yeah. And and so like this is a you know American based company. And so they're gonna that's they're gonna be good at that. You know, it's the actual fact itself of it being compatible and, and working for many years. I sure would hope so because yeah. the whole thing with this half generation, new generation mm-hmm. thing is the idea of like you don't have to upgrade. This is for those people that want a little bit extra out of their console, yeah. and that's what they're billing it as. I know they're talking about their performance numbers and all that, and we'll get to that. But yeah. like it's it has to be you cannot fragment a player base in the consoles. That's like the yeah. sole at that point. Benefit you you you've disconnected from your community at that point. If you think that like oh mm-hmm. yeah this one is like this is this is just a Scorpio game. And we're not going to make it on the Xbox right. One. And it's like, yeah, that'd be stupid. Yeah, and like I think until you officially say like, all right, we're phasing out the Xbox One, and it's been five, six, five, yeah, seven years. It is. But 
Yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's important. I mean, and Sony's doing the same thing with the PS4 Pro. You know, it's a very similar thing. It's like we're supporting it, doing both as they go along, and I think it's great for it. Yeah. Uh, another interesting point from the article that that caught my eye, mm-hmm. kind of more, um, was it had I think it wasn't directly quoted, but um, it said Spencer quote Spencer said recently said to fan. Boy, howdy. Go on. Spencer recently said fans may want to wait to pre-order the console until they see games running for it. And I thought that was an interesting point in kind of the the world we've been living in of pre-order first and ask questions later. Right. Lately, it's been less of that with with the advent of No Man's Sky, where everybody pre-ordered and thing, yeah. got burned <laughs> on it. And so everybody's kind of now like, ooh, I don't know if I want to pre-order. Yeah. It's but impressive it's, how one indie game studio can change the whole scope of things. Yeah, well, it... I mean, indie game studio with with the backing of Sony's advertising, mm-hmm. like just rips down the right. world of pre-ordering. Like a lot of people have said. Like I listened to, to kind of funny games cast and and uh, a guy on there by the name of Colin Moriarty is always pushing this. Don't pre-order. What do you need? What do you need to pre-order for? Just wait. Let it run. Like yeah. let people see it. See what they say. And mm-hmm. if it's bad, you didn't waste sixty dollars. Yeah. No, I think that's that's a good thing to get to, and I think we're getting there. Yeah. I mean, and it's. It's 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 cool that they're he's out there to say that and yeah. that's great, but it is a PR thing and they've watched how Sony did things and they're adjusting because of that. I don't yeah. think Sony did bad by the way that they pre order stuff. They didn't announce the pre orders super early. Yeah. It was it didn't come up until they'd, we'd already seen footage. We already learned a lot more about the console. They did it right. This is more just lip service to fans to build that positive PR. I don't think it's bad. Yeah. It just it is what it is. It's smart marketing is what it is. Because now everyone's like, ooh, Microsoft really cares about the gamer and making sure we're getting our money's worth. Like, do they? Uh, yeah. Probably not. I mean, I think for that matter, like the 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 way he said it, so he says that, right? So he says, right. hey, you may not wait to pre order until you see games are on it. And then if by some happenstance the thing does flop, he goes, I warned you. <laughs> like <laughs> I told you, I said suck. it. It's not my fault you didn't pay attention. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it's just interesting to see that that pointed out because especially people who pre-ordered the Switch are a little worried They're after seeing little the concerned. Switch conference. Right. And I think the Switch will be fine. I think hardcore Nintendo fans are going to get what they get. Yep. Um. If you're looking for third party, you may be, you may be hurting for Square. I mean, you shouldn't be coming to Nintendo if you're looking for third party. No, let's be honest, hey. sir. Um, so, um, we find the question I'd written down. So, how long do you think they continue supporting the old one? Like, because Sega did this back in the day, towards when they started. Because you know, you want to avoid yeah. having to have developers like, oh, we got to make it for three different consoles. Now, see, the problem with Sega, and it was, you know, a lot of it was before our time in terms yeah, of gaming. Yeah, but a lot of it, ago. that was right along the times <laughs> of a lot of format wars, right? Yeah, we're talking about VHSs, we're talking about Betamaxes. He had laser discs. That was yeah, it was back in the like so you sixteen have these, and these different things, era. and it was not just like here is my Sega, and here's my Sega that also fits that, and here's my Sega that also fits yeah. that. It was there was just a lot of different stuff going on. Everyone trying to figure out what to do. Um, in terms of how long, I. I don't even know if there should ever be a break because the way that Sony does it, I think, is actually really good. It's not giving people advantages in multiplayer games, giving stuff a boost uh, in games that um, so you're still running on a 1080p TV, giving boost to that. Um, and you're they're enforcing with their developers, like if you're going to make it, it needs to run just as good on the PS4 as it possibly can. Yeah. Right? They don't want you to be shafting the older console adopters just because we didn't get the latest mm-hmm. and greatest. And I think that's going to be a thing until the next generation. I think that when they stop doing stuff for the PS4 is also when they stop doing stuff for the PS4 Pro. I don't see them separating it because they were touting okay. this idea of not fragmenting the f- player base. Yeah. Because when you're doing console gaming, what's the big benefit? Right there, you, you just plug and play. Right, you've yep. got games; it's going to work. It'll be on, and that's it. And then the other benefit is that as developers, you plan for one thing, right? And in this case, you have you now have two things technically, um, but really it's more or less. I know I'm probably um, dumbing it down a bit too much, but you're checking a box for higher fidelity or for higher resolution. Yep. And well, it's similar and to PC gaming at that point. Like, all right, like yeah. I get to run it at a higher resolution. And on this computer mm-hmm. than I do on this one. Like I could turn this later this this fader up to extreme graphics. And I have right. to run this one I kinda like, ah, this is kinda good, but it's still playing the game well as yeah. long as I work my machine to do it. And in yeah. the console world I think 
they just do that legwork for you before yep. it gets to you. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's you're you're getting into dangerous waters with it, and I think if you start to have these hardware variations as we go along, asking yeah. people to pay more and more, what's the benefit from console gaming over PCs because now you're fragmenting your player base and you're asking them to spend more money on a more yeah. regular basis and I don't think that's the console base in a nutshell PC gaming is never going to be plug it into your TV everything always works it always looks the same nope. it's not going to be like that and console gaming's biggest advantage is appealing to the masses appealing to that casual audience and if you start to take away those things because you want better graphics for the richer people or you just you want to add more and more to it then you're going to lose a, a huge chunk of audience i think yeah. from that because like if i'm gonna have to spend 800 dollars every two years on consoles i know that's extreme yeah. but that's the direction we're tapering to then why i'm gonna get my pc and i'm gonna play that mm -hmm. because I'm already going to have a PC for A, B, and C, so I just spend slightly more on my PC, and now I can do all the stuff I was doing on console back on PC. I can upgrade a piece every couple of years, and it keeps yeah. me up to date, as opposed to buying a whole new machine every yeah. couple of years. Yeah. And so that's kind of the thing that I was that I was wondering about. Like, do we think we see consoles moving less in the we had PS one, two, three, four, and maybe five eventually, and more to the like, all right, we have PS four Pro, and now we have PS insert your name insert mm -hmm. the, you know your matrix code name here and like every two and three years we're getting just a different iteration that's a little bit better and a little bit better and we see less of the here are definite console lifetimes i think it's going to depend on how the pro sells over the next couple of years mm -hmm. and how project scorpio turns out if they can really deliver six teraflops performance and if they can what's that going to cost the consumer i guarantee you that's not coming to you for four hundred dollars it's no. not going to happen that's a really big number and granted it's just one piece of the puzzle but people aren't going to be getting that for the same price as their xbox one or their xbox one s like that's not going to happen yeah. so it's it looks like it might go that way and i think if they see the sales of the ps4 Pro and the Project Scorpio going up as a result and see the money coming in, they'll just keep doing it. And I don't think it's healthy for console game. That's going to be the big thing. Is like they don't, honestly, I don't think that any of the companies really care about the gamers, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, they're in it to make it's money. About money. We can't really fault them for that because it's no. money, right? Sony, it's business is what it is. Especially for Sony, their console market, that's their. Profit. That's, that's the right profitable now. division of Sony. Like if you yeah. didn't know that, PlayStation is what makes Sony yeah. money. It's not Everything TVs, else it's loses not money. At least last time I checked, it's I that, haven't checked recently. It's that but, console yeah. stuff. And so if that's going to get them more money, I think that that's what they're going to go to. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't like that. And so I think I don't either. Uh, what I really think we're going to see is we're going to see a PS5 and an Xbox 2 or I don't know whatever stupid name they'll come <laughs> up with. Um just, it's just such a stupid name. I don't it's know why you went name. from Xbox to 360 to one. Yeah, like, just yeah, like they're cool. I do want an Xbox. I mean, to be fair. Let it be said, I am not like <laughs> anti-Xbox. I want one, but I like name. my PlayStation better. Yeah, and so like I think that there will be a, a definitive next generation three or four years after these consoles come out. I yeah. think this is extending the generation, right? Because my PS4, we'll be able to play the latest and greatest games for eight years, mm -hmm. right? Because we've got three years and then PS4 Pro, and then I think we'll have another three or four years and we'll start hearing about the five. And then I think that's probably going to be the last home console in the form factor that we're seeing now because people are demanding graphical upgrades and things like this. And before, it, it took years to figure out how to build engines and how to build this stuff. People are better at that now. And yeah. I think that they will be able to get more out of their developing engines and their consoles and things like that at a much sooner time in the console's life. So I think with the PS5, we'll start to see it maxing out a year or two into its console life. And mm -hmm. I think that's where you're going to start seeing just the, you know, it's just diminishing returns. And it's like you can only get so good in a form factor and a price this yeah. big. And we're going to hit a wall and. We're just we're gonna be screwed as console owners. I yeah, think. need to stay like as the console market, you have to stay approachable to the average person who jumps in here. Like, yeah, we like as if they launch a PS5 Pro and it's six hundred dollars. We're like, okay. I mean, no upgrading. Yeah, I'll spend six hundred dollars because I know I'm gonna run that for eight years. But you get like Joe new to gaming steps in and he's like, ooh, I don't know if I want to spend six hundred dollars on a console. Like, right. that's a lot. And granted, they have the slim option that's cheaper and doesn't. It's right. not as powerful, but still, it's kind of not the point. Yeah. Um, and I think as as we move forward, and this is kind of what I hope for, as much as I like having physical media, like if we move into more of a digital feature, like, all right, so the console ships with a 
two terabyte hard drive. Oh, and, it's going to have to soon. And then it's like, all right, games go all digital. That takes development costs down. Well, not necessarily development costs, but it takes shipping costs out of it. That takes printing costs out of it. Mm-hmm. That, and so, I mean, obviously we see that, I mean, that works out bad for places like GameStop, but you know, how long does GameStop stay around? I mean, GameStop isn't really this, doing themselves any favors at this point. No, but I mean, if you go into a GameStop anymore, like it's more clothes and like notebooks and pop vinyl figures. And yeah. like, we still have to have somewhere to buy the console, even though you can yeah. still buy it on Amazon. But I would actually, I would love to see it moved in digital future. Cause then we go from like, Oh, mm-hmm. game is $60. Like, Oh, well game full new game is $40. Like, okay, now we're moving mm-hmm. into the steam space yeah. as far as pricing the prob- is concerned. The problem with that idea. And I, I like that idea that I want it to be all digital. But the, the problem is the prices are just not similar. I can go out and get a dis- physical copy of a game for like 10, 15 bucks, like three yeah. months after it releases, and digitals don't reflect that. Why? That, that's what I want to know. Like, why aren't those prices changing as it goes? And well, I think you, until we find a way to have digital stuff changing in price the same way everything else does, I don't think it's going to be feasible. Well, I think, I think you see things media. do get cheaper over, over their life on a digital, on a digital platform. Um, you don't see them get as cheap as they do in physical physical form but because once you return something to GameStop they take it and they sell it that's not going like you know yeah. Naughty Dog's not taking a, a cut from a, a pre-owned copy of Uncharted right. 4 like that's all for GameStops so they don't have to charge as much for it now like when you get it digital that's all that's all where it's supposed to go every time but I think yeah. if we move to this kind of future we're going to see more you know regular flash sales like oh this month we're doing a flash sale on this type of gaming this month we're doing yeah. it on this type of gaming and blah 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 they actually have games that people play exactly not like once a year like we're doing a flash sale on games like oh look it's you know a year the, after the witcher yeah it's one. like sweet call of duty $5 black $5 ops off. 3 is ten dollars off ten dollars off cool that's exactly what i wanted <laughs> in yeah. december after <laughs> infinite warfare's out <laughs> yeah exactly for sure that's one of those uh yeah, so I mean, I would love to see all digital. I just mainly just from the standpoint of I don't have to go grab my discs to play stuff. <laughs> mainly from the standpoint of we're lazy. <laughs> like I'm lazy. Like that's there's nothing. I I feel no shame in that. Good PS Plus games are great for that because I'm like I don't really feel like playing Final Fantasy right now. I played it for you know six hours yesterday. I'm like oh look, pop pop pop, playing. <laughs> it's, I love it. Yeah, it's I exactly it. how it should be. I think. All right, Mark segment times here. Mark segment one, two, three. So people can skip things they don't want to see. I don't know why you guys would ever want to skip us. Lazy. Lazy is what I call that. Yeah. I know you're getting a little how the sausage <laughs> is made in a second, guys. Insult our, uh, insult our audience <laughs> and then ask them to stick around for You know, I just while. want them to be sure that, you know, <laughs> I want to be sure that this relationship is if clearly you're defined. you're going to be here, you need to be, <laughs> you need to be invested in this. <laughs> All right. So next segment here, we got, it was, it's an interesting article. It's not necessarily, this is kind of our time where we talk about just miscellaneous stuff whether it's tech news or whether it's twitter questions and things like that so the yep. first thing uh you tracked down today or not today but this week was the galaxy days ago. galaxy s8 uh design leaks design leaks today. these are always interesting like right. you always see them for the iphone like two months before they go to the apple event yeah. it's just like here's what the iphone's gonna do it's gonna have a screen that extends out three feet this way <laughs> and you can watch you know cinema wide movies on them you can like, cast not, a keyboard on the really stupid why would you ever want to do that it's like, no, it's not. no but what i found is is an article on forbes uh, talking about a, a design leak, and basically what this is is if these design leaks are true, why they might be deal breakers. Right. And so toss that link below so you guys can go read yep, it yourself. They are leaks. You take them with a grain of salt, and I think you mentioned that they had one or both of them had been disproven. Or, one of them had been disproven. Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, potentially. So the the first one that Forbes marks as deal breaker number one is the Samsung branding. So if you haven't seen the uh, S8 yet, check out that link below and you can kind of see so, but design on, pictures. But on so my you, phone, you can see there's a Samsung logo right at the top and then the screen starts just below that, right? Yep. So on the on the S8, they're supposed to have smaller bevels. So either side of that, either side of your screen is the bevel and so like they want it to be smaller. So with that, what you lose as, as a company maker is you lose your branding space across the top if you're Samsung mm-hmm. and you lose your home button at the bottom, which... Not a huge it, deal. Yeah, you kind of get over it in a... In a in a market where we're moving more towards just straight touch screens, and so what someone had found and what had been potentially leaked was that they were going to put on the screen on the top, you know, quarter inch of the screen at all times was a Samsung name. So basically, it would still look the same all the time, except for instead of being part of the bezel, it's just part of the screen. And so that is honestly one of the things that I don't see happening. 
Like that would yeah. be stupid to be like, look how big our screen is, except for this part this where we're gonna say this is always this part's just ours. Be our this part's ours. Yeah, I, I, it's it's silly. I, I think it's one of those that's definitely like somebody's trolling someone somewhere, and they just like published it and like, wait a second, that sounds ridiculous. If I mean, Samsung has made mistakes, we all know how the Note <laughs> Seven works. Explosive out. mistakes, you might Explosive say. Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the biggest, the one thing you can always say about Samsung is their marketing and their product design has always been top notch in yep. terms of what the consumer wants and what they bring to the table. Yeah. So I can't, I really can't imagine that they're going to want to put Samsung on the screen that they're you just waste the space that they're yeah. advertising. So I don't think that's yeah. Legit. No, well, and I imagine that even if they do, and they even mentioned in the article that if they do put it in there and they get the giant backlash that they would get if that happens, like mm-hmm. that's a patch and it's gone. Yeah, like that is a thing where they say, "Hey, stop doing this. Right, push update, and then da ding, it's just gone, and <laughs> we have our quarter inch back from our screen." Yeah, and so I don't think that's a big deal. Now the second deal breaker, I don't find to be a deal breaker personally. So they want to take the fingerprint scanner and move it from where it would be. So I have an iPhone right now. So my fingerprint scanner is down here. And they want to take it and they want to move it to the back by the camera. Yep. So just to the right of the camera. And it's not like something they want to do. There's like an actual mocked up picture. There's a picture of it. Now, granted, could still be photoshopped, could be fake. Could be an well, early prototype. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It could be an early prototype. But honestly, like as I was looking at it, like this doesn't bother me a ton because when I take my phone out of my pocket, like I'm reaching for my home button on the side, right? And so I'm reaching for the home button on the side and look like my hand's already back here. Yeah. Like it would be the same way on that phone. Like Samsung's had the side, the mm-hmm. side mounted home button forever, and so you just whip it out, bing. Like I'm more, I've already opened it and I haven't even looked at the screen. Yeah. Yet. I I would push back. I mean, I have you know the S7's got the fingerprint sensor on the front of it and works well for me. Um, I personally don't think it's a good idea because one, let's let's say it is true and it happens and stuff. What do you do with the case? Do you have a case that has like an open section for it? And, and then they you, already got cases with holes in it. Yeah, but then you're gonna have to put now push your finger into like a divot. I think at that point you line it. And up I do properly. have a case question in here because according to these designs, it has both both edges are curved, kind of right. like the S7 edge. Yeah, S7 is that what it's called? Edge. Yeah, which I like. The design looks cool, and it's cool having those digital buttons. Have a case until they don't work ridiculous yeah but how do you case that phone now like yeah. you have slim edges that you can't like wrap around it and if you have a fingerprint scanner on the back now it's a hole so it's one of those things but i think if they do make a case for it like that like it's it, you know it tapers yeah. down into that so it's you just like reach up just, slide it just, it's so, one of those things which but a taper case would be hard to manufacture would take more money and all of a sudden you're paying 50 dollars for a case again and i don't yep. want that i i don't like it mainly because i already have a fingerprint scanner in a place that i'm used to and i love I, I don't think this will be final. I don't think if you're talking about average consumer picking up their phone and wanting to do it, where have they unlocked their phone from for the last, well, since we've had smartphones, so seven, eight years? Mm-hmm. Home button, side button, right? No one uses the back unless you're LG, which get out. Nobody buys an LG. Nobody That's buys not LG. happening. Well, right? here's the deal, though. They're already taking away the home button. So with the fingerprint scanner not love. being on the back, which I get, where do you put it? Like, screen doesn't read it. Well, personally, I don't agree with taking away the home button. I think it's... I think having that tactile button there is is essential to having the smartphone. I don't yeah. can't imagine not having one. I wonder if they don't move. So maybe one of two things could happen. If they don't curve both edges, like, all right, you can put something on the side that resembles a home button. Granted, don't think you put a fingerprint scanner on the side of the phone. Yeah. But you do that. Mm. Or it moves back to the top like the old iPhone. Like your lock button yeah. and your home button is up here now. So it's like, I bing. Know. I don't know. Granted, I don't that have being good- said, I have... Yeah. decently sized hands and I can reach the top of my phone. I can reach the top of a big phone with relative ease. I know not yeah. everyone that is going to get the I phone have small hands, has so. I have comically hands. small hands as people have pointed <laughs> <It's> out. <true. laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I don't like either of these things and I hope that it, it is not what you know they say nope. it is. I'm hoping that it's some sort of uh, um, some sort of fake info or just some kind of weird mock. But it's interesting still. Like it's for Samsung to have gotten so many things right if they like really like swung and missed on these things, like that would really suck. That'd to be come really out. surprising because you're coming off of this exploding Note coming Seven, a bad phone, and like the S Seven was a really good phone. S Seven Edge is a really good phone. And so like, yeah. what's your follow up? Oh, we're gonna change everything you know about a smartphone and put it in a really awkward place and not do things normally. Why? Because we innovate. Because we're courageous, right? Practically t- magic. Practically magic. So I I would like to think that they won't do it. Yeah, I I think that we're probably okay, and I think. We saw some leaks, and 
nothing's going to really come of it. As someone who's looking to move away from their, their iPhone, mm-hmm. um, I do want to get a Samsung phone, uh, but I'm also interested in the Google Pixel yep. because of the Google network. That's true. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of see where things go from there. But that is going to round us out for tonight. Look at uh, that. We made it on time. Yeah, we actually made and it on we time. we had a guest. With a super long segment. Boy, so, I am pretty proud of us. You should be proud of us too. Yep. You know, it's it's been a good good few few weeks doing this. I'm enjoying this. So, uh, you know, as always, comment below. Let yeah, us so know if, what if you like. If you find updates on the the phone, or you have input on consoles, or your Super Bowl predictions, like put them in below, and we'd love put to see like what you think. Below. Yeah, your score predictions in the comments be below. Great. We'd love, love to kind of compete with you guys in that you way. You guys are big it goes. on football. Just like make up two numbers and put them down there, <laughs> and like. Put a team. Like, don't I think don't even fun. put a team next to it. Just like, put two I numbers. Like, Let's see how close you get. Because I know we've get. got some people that are overseas and watching, and maybe you guys are like, football? I, I don't understand. What's su- Super Bowl? Put in a soccer score and see how close it. you are. Yeah. <laughs> like, just put in something ridiculous and stupid. Um, but definitely, if you guys got stuff that you think we should talk about next week, uh, let us know. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody, and we'll see you next week. See you. Bye.